Hi, welcome to this quick tip for Redshift with me, Tim Clapham from hellolux.com. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at using the Redshift 2 material to create this messy ink style effect. If you want to learn more about working with the Redshift 2 material, then check out the Hellolux Redshift Essential Tune Material Collection. It comes with over 100 presets. Um, all of the materials come with notes in the node graph, so they're easy for you to look at adapt and understand. So let's dive straight into this tip. You can see in here I've got a few objects, a floor, a background which are just basically planes and also this Nissan Patrol which is just essentially a few pieces of geometry. I'm going to come to my material manager, create materials and add in a two material. So this is the default two material. Let's drop this onto our floor and then hold control and just drop this onto each of our objects. You can see the redshift view update straight away it's not looking too good um, and that's mostly because there isn't a light in here and it's using the default light but we're not going to worry about that for now because we're actually going to come in here and we're going to take both of these tone maps and just delete those now select the two material and i'm going to come down and just set the reflection weight to be zero so we don't have any reflection either in the material node editor press c and then type camera you should see a camera map node option drag that in and select this and I'm going to drag this across and drop this into the tone map. Then I'm going to press C and add in a color correct. And we can just drop that onto the wire as well. Come back to the camera map. Now, of course, it's totally black because we haven't actually defined a texture. So with that selected in the attribute manager, come over here to path, click on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a texture of some paper that I have like so. And if you don't have one of these, you can easily find one online or just grab some dirty paper and take a photo. I'm going to come to this color correct and I just want to bring the saturation down. So it's almost um, grayscale, not quite a tiny little bit of color in there. So that's it for the tune material. That was nice and simple. Now let's look at contour. So if we select this, so we have external and internal contour lines. First thing I'm going to do is just change the thickness. I'm going to set these to be 25. And I'm going to set the internal to be 20. So you can see it's pretty thick, but we're going to use noise to control that thickness. The other thing I want to do is on the angle threshold, just bring that down a little bit to 10. Actually, let's take the internal down a little bit lower to 15. OK, so in the node editor, press C and add in max on noise. And what I'm going to do is take the out color and drag that into the thickness modifier for the external contour. Select the max on noise and over here I'm going to change the noise type and I'm going to choose Luca. I'm also going to change the random seed to some random number. Now if we come down you can see that we've got input source. You might need to fold these open and at the moment the source for the input is the object. So that's essentially the object axis. So everything is positioned around that. So if you move the object, the noise will move with it. You can choose world in here, in which case it's based in world space. If you move the object, then it will move through the noise, um, which you may or may not want. And the last option is to use the actual UVs or any vertex attribute that you may have. We're going to use object on here, but that will cause us a couple of problems later. But I will show you how we can fix that. I'm going to bring the scale down but at the moment, we probably won't notice that because the noise is actually only affecting the external thickness and we need to do the internal. So before I do that, I just want to press C, add in a change range, and I'm going to drop that onto the wire here. Now we've got that, we can then just connect that up to the internal lines. So at the moment, change range is going from zero to one and zero to one. So it's remapping the noise exactly the same. But now we've done that, you can see that we are getting some variation in thickness and obviously the noise scale is miles too high. So come to the max on noise and let's set that down to five. Okay, and there we go. And you can see that now we're getting a result. Let's just move this over, hide this, and perhaps we can even pull this down just so we get a bit more room for you to see the actual render. If we now come back to this change range, we can click here and just fold that up because we can access all the values over here. So we're going to take those minimum and maximum values and I'm actually going to take the new range minimum that it's going to output and I'm going to set that to be a minus value. So we're going to go minus 0.15. Okay, and you can see that that's creating gaps for us and holes. Um, but what we can do with the maximum as well is you can actually take this up much higher. So you could take this as high as you want. You could say five. And we're going to go five times larger. 
I'm not going to take it that high, of course, maybe 1.2. Okay, there we go. Now I also want to affect the opacity. So let's just come in a little bit closer so we can see this. And we're going to take the max on noise and drop it in here to external opacity. I'm going to add in a change range once again. And then we can also feed this into the internal opacity. So you can see now we're getting quite a lot of variation in opacity. It's going very pale. We don't really want it to be quite as pale as this. So on this change range, let's set the minimum to be 0.6. Oh, and let's set the maximum to be 1.2. There we go. So you can see we're now getting variation in the thickness and we're getting a variation in the opacity. And of course, feel free to kind of adjust these to the look that you want. Set that back to 1.2. Now, one thing that is important in this scene is the scale of the noise. And if we select the noise here, you can see that we have our scale set to five. One thing you might notice here, though, is that the actual ground, the scale is much smaller than the scale on the object itself. So we will fix that in a moment. But the reason I bring this up is because depending on your scene or your objects, you may need to adjust that scale drastically in comparison to the values that I'm using. So don't forget to just play around with that until you get the look that you want. The other thing that you might notice, if we come back to the thickness modifier, let's set the max range up high again, say three. And you'll notice here on the render at the edge of the vehicle, we're getting very, very hard edges. And that's the external line and it's being cut off by the geometry itself. But there is a feature that you can use to actually get around this. And I'll show you how that works. So what you can do is come to contour and you can come here and we've got this option here, detect separate meshes and it will then detect the edges between the two meshes. So it would detect this background mesh and this foreground mesh. So if we enable that, you can see that now we are getting a different result. And if we do that for the internal as well, you can see that the result is definitely changing. But there is a problem, and that is the noise on the background has got a different scale to the noise on the vehicle. And that's to do with the noise here being set up as the object source. Now we could fix that quite easily, just by creating a new material for each object. But we all know that that's terrible workflow and we need to be able to do it in one material really. Select the change range and let's just set that max back to 1.2. So we haven't got those huge thick lines. You can still see that we have the issue here. Um, and you can press control one to reset your view. So the way that I would fix this is user data. So I'm gonna to come to my object here, floor. OK, and I'm going to come down to the attribute manager, user data and choose add user data. OK, and we're going to create this thing called data. So we're going to change the name to scale and it's a float with a float slider and the unit would be real. OK, we can set the step to be maybe 0.1 and set the min, maybe the max with 100. We might want that higher and we'll set the default to just be one. Click OK. So that creates this user data with a scale value of one. I'm going to right click on this and choose user interface, copy user data interface, and then select my background and choose user data, paste user data interface. OK, and we can just click OK, come to our Nissan and choose paste user data interface and click OK. So basically on each of these objects now we have this user data with a value for scale but it's not actually doing anything at the moment, but it is creating an, essentially an attribute that we can use within our network. So if we come over here and we press C and then we add in scalar user data, this will then read any user data that we've created. And we know that we called ours scale. And we can then take that and we can drag this out of here and set this to input scale. And you can see that hasn't really changed anything, but the reason for that is because the value on our user data is exactly the same for all of them. So now if I come here and zoom in a little bit and then come up to my background where my scale says one, I'm gonna set that to 25. And there you go. And you can see that's already working and it's not affecting the vehicle. And I don't think that's high enough, maybe even higher, 50. Even higher, 70, something like so. And if we then come down here and look at the ground you can see that that is also too low so we can set, select the floor and let's set that up to say five there we go and that's now allowing us to control the scale of that noise for each of our objects by using the user data so there we go that's the end result 
Don't forget to check out the Redshift Essential Tune materials over at hellolux.com. And thank you very much for watching.